Hey YouTube, this is Daniel Van Orden. and welcome back for another Technology Tip of the Week. This week we're going to revisit Google Forms. About two years ago I did a video on Google Forms and how you can get started using Google Forms to create quizzes, tests, or really gather any information from your students, parents, or whoever you'd like to gather information from. Well, a lot has changed the past two years regarding Google Forms. Google Forms has been updated to include several types of questions, inserting videos and pictures, as well as file uploads and automatic grading. So let me share my screen with you. We'll get started with some of the updates to Google Forms. So I'm starting out in Google Drive. That is drive.google.com. You can also go to Google Forms at forms.google.com and start a Google Form there. But I feel like it's a lot more organized when I start out in Google Drive. And so a lot of the times I like to start things out in Google Drive so I can create a folder that I can organize those forms and documents in. So that's exactly what I'm going to do is create a folder for my Google Forms. So I'll click the blue new button, click folder, and I'm going to name this folder Google Forms create it and that folder is created so I'm going to go inside of that folder to create my Google form. Again I click the blue new button go down to more and choose Google forms and the Google forms creator will appear and you'll notice that it is quite different from the original Google forms creator. It's a lot more colorful and it's a lot more simplistic and there's not a lot of searching that needs to be done in order to start creating questions and text for my Google Form. The first thing I'm asked to do is to title the form. Uh, click inside the untitled form and just give it a title. So this is chapter one quiz. I tap that into the title. At the top left you'll notice that the title of the file hasn't changed yet but if I just click on untitled form in the top left it will change it to the title of the form so the file is renamed to whatever I typed into the form title. Right below the form title is the form description. This is where you could type in any directions for your form. So if it was a test and you wanted them to take their time or you wanted to add in a reading passage into the description that they use for the entire quiz or if you simply wanted to give directions on how to fill out this form for a discipline referral or for a nurse note or for a field trip sign up. You simply type into the form description here what you would like for the responders to see as far as their instructions and directions for this form. Then right below that you'll have untitled question and this is your very first question. When I hover over the question you'll notice that six dots appear. Those six dots are the move icon. It allows me to move that question around in the form. There are no other questions here, so I really can't move this question around just yet. But once I create a few questions, I can rearrange those questions by clicking and holding on the six dots and moving that question around. The very first question I want to add to this Google Form, since it's a quiz, will be name. Because Google Forms does not automatically retrieve the name of the respondent. It can be set to retrieve the email address of the respondent, but the name is not automatically generated. So I want to type in a question where the student would type their name. Google Forms has been set to automatically change the question type when you type particular things into the question text. For instance, for name, it does automatically change it to short answer. If you need to change that question type, you simply click on the drop-down box and you're given the options of all of the types of questions that you can use in Google Forms. Those question types are short answer, paragraph which allows the respondent to type longer responses, multiple choice which allows for one answer to be selected, check boxes which is kind of like a multiple select. It allows for multiple options to be selected in an answer. Drop down is exactly as it sounds. It's a drop down list like we're using right now. The newest one is file upload. File upload allows the respondent to upload a file to their Google Form response. So if they have a picture or a document that they want to attach to their Google Form, they can do that. A good example of this would be if you were creating an online application and you wanted the respondent to upload a copy of their resume. Linear scale, multiple choice grid, checkbox grid 
all fall along the same lines as some of those lacquer scales that you may fill out that you are asked to rate things on a scale from one to five. Linear scale just has that one multiple choice grid, has multiple rows and columns, and checkbox grid has multiple rows and columns. And checkbox grid, again, would allow you to select multiple things in each of those rows and columns. Or multiple choice would only allow you to select one per row column combination. Date and time is as it was before. It's a place where you can have dates and times entered in as a response for your question. Since this is a name question, I'm going to choose short answer. And right below the question, I have a couple of icons. The first icon is the duplicate icon. This allows this question to be duplicated so that the same question appears twice. The delete icon looks like a trash can. If I click that, it deletes that question out. There's also a toggle for making a question required. If you would like for your question to be required and the respondent cannot submit their question without answering this question, you can click on the required toggle and it will make that question a required question. This form cannot be submitted unless that question is filled out. And then right beside that is the more icon and it allows you to do a few more things based upon the type of question that you chose. For instance, with short answer, you are given the option of setting up response validation, which would require a certain type of text to be entered in, whether it's a number, an email address, or whatnot. Description allows you to have that question description box up here. This would be a great place for you to type in further information regarding that question. For instance, you may have specific directions for a particular question, or you may want to explain that question a little further. You can do that inside of the description box. To the right of a question, you'll see the toolbar that allows you to add a question, add a title and description, which is just really titles and text for particular parts of the form. The add image icon allows you to add in an image to your Google form, whether it's a chart, graph, diagram, or a picture you'd like to reference inside of your quiz or test, you can add in an image. Google Forms has the ability to do the image search that's built into most Google tools so that you could search for the life cycle of a frog and images from Google search will appear that you can select and insert into your Google Form as an image. You can delete that image out if you'd like. You can click on the delete icon and it will let you delete that entire image out just like you can delete out a question. The add video icon allows you to add in a video from YouTube. You can either do a YouTube video search or you can add in the video from YouTube using the URL of that video. Simply paste in the URL and you will have that video show up in your Google form. This is a great way to introduce a blended learning environment into your classroom where students may watch a video that you have created and then answer a few questions regarding the instruction that you gave them in that video. And finally, the add section is a lot like page break. It allows you to break up your quiz, test, survey, or whatever you're creating in your Google Form into sections, and these are different pages. So respondents will have a next button at the bottom of each page that allows them to move on to the next set of questions. This allows you to break up a fairly long quiz, test, or survey into multiple sections so that it's not so overwhelming for the respondent. We'll go ahead and add another question, which is the correct graph of y equals 2x. Now since this is a question regarding a graph, I'm going to be looking at inserting images. You'll notice that when I hover over either the question text or the answer choice, I have the add image icon that shows up there as well. If I click the add image icon, it allows me to go search for or use an image that I already have on my computer or my Google Drive that I would like to use as an answer choice or as a question text. So this is y equals 2x. I want to search for that particular graph. And insert it in. You do have to give some type of text there, so I'm just going to choose A, B, C, and D. And we'll insert a few other graphs. So 
So now I've created a question that has images as answer choices. You can also take advantage of screenshots and sniffing tools that would allow you to sniff out images that you may graph on an online graphing calculator such as Desmos. So those are some of the options that you have for creating questions in Google Forms. At the very top, you'll notice multiple icons as well. The puzzle piece, which is for your add-ons, such as Form Publisher. The color palette, which allows you to change the theme of your Google Form. The eyeball is for you to preview that Google Form so that you see what that Google Form looks like when your students take it. The gear is the settings icon. It allows you to change the different settings for your Google Form, such as collecting email addresses, giving respondents response receipts, restricting it to your domain, and limiting it to one response. You can also allow respondents to edit their responses after they submit, and also see summaries and text responses of other responses. So if you were setting up a sign-up sheet for a potluck dinner, you might want folks to be able to edit their responses and also see a summary chart and text responses of what other people have said that they're going to bring so that folks might sign up for mashed potatoes, notice that three other people are bringing mashed potatoes, and decide to go back and change their response. At the top, you'll see two other tabs. One is the presentation, and it allows you to change the way that your Google Form looks for each respondent. You can have a progress bar show at the bottom if you have multiple sections. And you can also shuffle question order. So if you don't want the same question order for each respondent, you can tell it to shuffle the question order. And you can also have it show a link to submit another response. If this is a quiz that you don't want students to be able to take again, or you don't need that, you can uncheck show link to submit another response. You could also change what is said after someone responds to your Google form by clicking into and changing the confirmation message. By default, it will say your response has been recorded. The final tab under Settings is the Quizzes tab, and you, this allows you to make a Google Form a quiz. I'll put a link in the description of this video to another technology tip of the week that I did on how to make a Google Form into a quiz that automatically grades itself. This is a really great trick for you to be able to use with your classroom that allows you to create a quiz that will automatically grade the answers that are typed in or selected by a respondent. To get out of this, you can either click Cancel or Save based upon if you made changes to the settings. Right beside the Settings gear is the Send button. This is how you will actually send out your Google Form to your students or to the folks that you want to respond to your Google Form. By clicking the Send button, you're given three different options. You can either email this Google Form to a particular person or to a group of people by typing in their email addresses in the To section. You can also click on the hyperlink icon and get a link to your Google Form for submission. This is how you would share out that Google Form so that people can respond to your Google Form. You can shorten the URL if you want a shorter URL and copy and paste that. You can throw it into Google Classroom, you could put it up on the board, you can send it out through email, or you could put it on a website. Finally, you're given the option of embedding that Google Form into a website. If you've set up a website and you want to embed your Google Form into that website, you can use this iframe HTML code to insert your Google Form into your website. You're also able to share the Google Form via Google+, Facebook, and Twitter using the appropriate icon. Finally, the three dots are the more options for Google Forms. Here you have undo, make a copy of the Google Form, move the Google Form to trash. You can also get a pre-filled link where you go ahead and fill in certain answer choices and allow the respondent to fill in the rest. You can print your Google Form and this will show a printable version of your Google Form. And finally, you can add collaborators, and these are the editors of your Google Form. These are the folks who are able to actually go in and make changes to your Google Form. Your script editor allows you to add in scripts and codes behind the Google Forms. And then your add-ons allows you to search for add-ons, such as Form Publisher. Then finally, the preferences, and this goes for all Google Forms, the default settings for all of your Google Forms that you create in the future. 
if you want to automatically always collect email addresses, if you want to automatically always make every question required, and if you want to set the default quiz point value to a certain point value, you can change that here and every quiz that you create from this point forward would have a default quiz point value of whatever number you select inside of that text box. Click Save and your preferences will be saved for all future Google Forms that you create. So now we're going to take a quick break and we're going to look at the responses that may come from a Google Form. So now we have a Google Form that has four responses to it. We sent this Google Form out, we had four people respond to it, and we want to check their responses. If we click the Responses tab, you'll see the answers that the folks responded with. And this is just an overview of the answers. So we had 75% of the people chose A for the correct graph. We had one person, 25%, chose B as their answer. We have the different questions that we had. And then I also did a upload file question and asked them to upload their resume. So they uploaded their resumes to this Google Form. I can view this as a summary or I can also view this as individual responses. So I can see how each person submitted their response. Click the arrows to move back and forward. If I need to delete a particular response, I can also do that. If someone responded twice and they only meant to respond once, I can delete one of their responses. I can also print their responses. This is also where I would turn off the Google Form. So if I no longer want it to accept responses, I simply click the toggle and it will no longer accept responses. When someone goes to the link for the Google Form, it will tell them this form is no longer accepting responses or whatever you type in this message for respondents. Finally, I'm also able to create a spreadsheet using Google Sheets that has the listing of all of these responses and this will be a real-time updated sheet. So as new people respond, their responses will also go into the same Google Sheet that I create. And I do that by clicking on the green Create Spreadsheet icon. It asks me to select a response destination. Here you can either create a new Google Sheet and name it here, or you can select an existing spreadsheet. So if you have multiple forms that you would like to go to one spreadsheet, you can do that as well. We're going to create a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet is created and it shows you the timestamp of when each submission occurred, the email address and the answers to each of the questions that the respondents submitted. You will also see a link to each of the files that the respondents submitted. This is really neat because you're able to go in and see a quick list of hyperlinks that take you directly to a file that was submitted. So since this is the resume, I have a list of resumes for folks who have submitted their resumes in this Google Form. The three dots beside the Google Sheets icon allows me to get email notifications for new responses, select a new response destination. I can unlink the form from that Google Sheet. I can also download the responses in a CSV and print all responses or delete all responses from within the More Options icon in the Responses tab. And those are some of the updates that you can find in the new Google Forms. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you get updated on new videos as I post them. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Again, this is Daniel Vanover with your Technology Tip of the Week on some of the updates to Google Forms. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.